Hello, this is example five. We're going to just uh, complete this pension worksheet. Once again, a little awkward because it's filled out in the lecture note, but we'll go through it. All right, by this time you've seen the pension uh, worksheet. And one thing I like in this example, I'm gonna go over a negative actual return, but before we do that, let's kind of tick things off. Here's our, so the bolds are the actual work that we're doing but the, the not bowls were the beginning, were the, uh, the information that was available. So we started with OCI prior service cost 80,000. We had OCI gain loss of 210,000. This is an accumulated loss. It's a debit balance, so this is an accumulated loss. And a pension asset of 125,000. PBO of a million and plan assets of 1.125 million. Now we can go through components of pension expense, 82,000 service cost, 90,000 interest cost, dot, dot. Amortization, so this was worked out for us, 61.54. The actual return is a negative 123,750. All right. Um, so that increases pension expense. We'll get to the asset gain or loss in a second. One, two, three, four, five A and five B. It's the fifth, of those two combined are the fifth component of pension expense. They didn't like six, I guess it wasn't a nice number. So they wanted just five, but there's actually five A and five B. Um, and uh, let's see, so we'll get to the asset gainer loss and the corridor gainer loss. Here is a liability. So this is gainer loss. So let's look at it a second. It's debiting the OCI, which is a stockholder's equity account. That's a reduction to stockholder's equity account. So this is a loss, all right? Increased PBO and a loss, liability loss, all right? And the corridor, once again, we'll, uh, note, I will point out this is a debit balance, so here we have to credit. And here's your contribution. So increase in plan assets and the benefits paid. All right. So service costs, no big deals given. Interest costs, no big deal given. Uh, prior service costs, amortization, no big deal given. Actual return, not a huge deal, but do note that this is increasing pension expense because it's a loss. Now we have to calculate the asset gain or loss. So, let's see. How do I do this? I'm gonna pause this and put in a, I think I'm gonna put in an extra blank sheet, be right. All right, so uh, we're going to calculate the asset gain or loss. Where did I go? Went the wrong way. Um, well, that didn't work out, hold out. I'll be right back again. All right, so let's work out the asset gain or loss down here. Asset gain or loss. Once again, it's an asset gain or loss because it's related to the plan asset. So they tell us that we have 123,750 over here. So asset gain or loss is actual return less E bracket is expected return will give us a gain or a loss. So let's see, the actual return was 123,750. One, two, three, seven, five, zero. So the expected return, they don't give us the expected return, they give us the expected rate of return. You have to multiply that times the beginning balance. So let's see, expected return equals 8% times 1.125, all right, and let me just add 
that over here. Equals 0 0.08 times one, one, two, five, one, two, three. Looks like 90,000, that's what I'm getting. So equals 90,000. So, and what is wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture is this is a minus, okay? Very typical mistake. So you can think of it this way. Our expected return is up here at plus 90,000. The actual return is down here at minus 123,750. So just to get back to zero, you have to add 123,750 and then you have to add another 90,000 to get there, all right? So you put it all together as a loss of 213,750. All right, so this is the negative case, the negative return case. People get that uh, messed up. So, um, you know, you get answers that are 123,750 minus 90,000. What is that like? Uh, it's something. So, One twenty three seven. What was that? One twenty three seven five zero. So this equals that minus that thirty three seven fifty. So that's a very common incorrect answer. So I'm just I have this negative return case, negative actual return, for a reason because it's the most confusing. Now here is your check. Always, 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 always check this. So the expected return is 90,000, 213,750, my net a credit, net of 123,750 is a credit, not a debit, a credit in the amount of the expected return, okay? That is a way for you to always double check that you didn't subtract what you should have added or vice versa, all right? So this is a loss, an asset loss. Obviously, you got, anytime you have a negative return, you got less than you expected, and whenever you get less than expected, you know, it's, you're sad, at least if you're a business student. All right, more money is good, all else equal. So um, there you go for the asset gain or loss, and it's a loss in this case with a negative actual return. So let's crank out the corridor, the beginning balance. I'm gonna use the equation that I showed in the other one. Uh, the corridor is going to be 10% times the 1.125 million because it's larger, 210. So corridor, amortization, 210,000 minus 10% times 1.125000. 000. And let's see, average remaining service life of active employees is 13 years. Okay, equals 210,000 minus 112,500 over 13. Now I already see that there's amortization because this is gonna be a positive number because the balance is larger, the balance is larger than the corridor, okay. So there is excess, the amount subject to amortization. Uh, 210, 112, 50, let's say. 210 equal 210,000 minus 12,500. 97,5. Just for completeness. So we have the balance, 210,000 minus what was it, 97.5, 500 over 13. So 97.5, oh shoot, sorry, that's bad, my bad. Just to show some terminology here, 97,500, this is the amount subject, this number, Amount subject to corridor 
amortization. So we have this amount is the corridor. This is the OCI GL balance. All right. Now the 97,500 is the amount subject to quarter amortization. And this is average remaining service life of active employees, or slice. So let's see if I got the right answer on the spreadsheet or the right answer in the video. And I got 7,500 and what did I put up here? Ah, yes, thank you. There is a God. All right, 7,500 and it's positive. Once again, if this had been negative, that would have indicated like, let's say the, the two, it wasn't 210, it was 50,000 would have been negative. That would just indicate that it's lower than the corridor and there's no corridor. Positive, so amortize. So the last step in your amortization, I know you're gonna do your happy dance because you got the number, but don't celebrate too early, okay? Don't celebrate too early because the amortization part is reduction. So this is a debit. So then go down here and credit. Also notice that since you started with a debit, these are both debits, you're amortizing the balance to pension expense. So right away, if you know there's corridor and the beginning balance is a debit, it's gonna increase pension expense. Had it been a credit and there was corridor, it would have decreased pension expense. That's another typical question you might get on my test in a CPA exam is it won't give you the actual numbers to calculate the corridor, but tell you that there was corridor and tell you the OCI gain loss was a beginning debit or credit balance. You should understand that you're amortizing to pension expense. So if you have a debit balance, you're going to debit or increase pension expense. If OCI gain loss has a beginning credit balance, you're going to credit pension expense and reduce it, okay? So that's a kind of a relationship to understand. All right, so we did the asset gain or loss and the quarter. Every time, every time, these are gonna be, these are the two tricky parts, okay? I mean, the one, two, three, four, really not bad. This is plus, plus, plus. It's plus or minus, but it's, you do the opposite that's over here. <clears throat> and, you know, a negative return is increasing pension expense, a positive return decreases it. But then asset gain or loss, you gotta do a little calculation. Not complicated or complex, it's just easy to get things flipped around. So use, again, this check here, where you can take the actual net of the asset gain or loss and come up with a credit equal to the expected return. And then the corridor, you know, you just have to learn how to do that calculation. All right. Finally, you know, the double check here, you have 308750, this is your plug number. It's equal to, I'll put in minus the sum of, let me just put A, B, C, and D. kind of Excel formula like. So this number 308750 comes from summing all of these up and taking the negative. Um, but the way to check is you start, you end with, excuse me, 183750. You started with 125. You started with a pension asset, ended with a pension liability totally possible. The market is that volatile. Um, I got it backwards, but you get the idea of pension asset liability. So it must be the case to do that, that you plug 308750. All right. So you calculate the 308750 two different ways. It won't catch every error. For example, if you incorrectly debited the 7500 in OCI gain loss and credit it over here. Those would be offsetting errors. So it doesn't capture every mistake. It won't capture offsetting errors. Uh, but what it catches is um, uh, errors where you forget to match debits and credits or just addition errors where you don't get, you get a total wrong in a column. So it does help you double check. And the other thing to realize is just conceptually in terms of the accounting that 
the actuary is giving you your ending balance and your beginning balance. That is does not come really at all from the accountant because the PBO and plan assets are given by a third party. So you, your journal entry conceptually, we're shoehorning into the measurement done by the actuary. All right. Like a lot of accounting, we look to other professions as a benchmark. And in pension accounting, the benchmark is the actuaries. The accounting part is what component goes where in which account. Okay. So this is the accounting part right here. It's all on the left side of this boundary. Okay. So that's an interesting thing to note that our pension expense adjusting journal entry is tied to or reconciled to the PBO and the plan asset balance beginning and ending. All right, that might actually, oh, let me go through the, so we post this, this is a loss. I just want to reiterate, it's a debit entry, so it's other comprehensive loss. Here's the amortization of prior service cost. Here's the funding payment. And there is the plug number if you were doing this journal entry style. Oh, what is the settlement rate? So you take the settlement rate times a million. So the rate times a million to get the 90,000. So all we're doing here is, and I threw this in here. See, I see this in a lot of CPA test banks, that's why. So usually it's settlement rate times PBO beginning equals interest cost. So all this thing does is rearrange. A lot of times these types of questions, it's just rearranging an equation that you know. All right. Uh, will there be quarter amortization in 2010? So the following year, let's go look at the worksheet. So the ending balance is 457,250. Oh yeah, and let's see, it'll be 10% times 1,192,000, which would be 119,200, and 457,250 is way bigger than that. So you know there's gonna be corridor, um, ends up being amount subject to amortization is 338,050. And you know, you might think you reduce it to 12, who knows? People come in uh, the company, people roll off the company. The average remaining service life of active employees has to be calculated every year. We can stick with the 13. Um, so it will be $26,004, okay? Oh, this isn't the end. Yeah, I have to see how we calculate the amortization. Okay, so, uh, but that's it for this example, which is a really good example with the negative return. And uh, the, the next separate, kind of totally separate skill we're gonna learn is uh, how to calculate amortization of prior service costs under the gap preferred method.